Okay, now I'd like to do, introduce our speaker for today, Janet Higgins. Janet has been a community outreach specialist for Be The Match at the City of Hope for the last six years. <clears throat> she works throughout Southern California to continually add donors to the bone marrow registry so that thousands of patients in need of a transplant, like me, have a better chance of finding a matching donor. Before going into the medical field, Janet toured for many years in the Broadway and national touring companies of Peter Pan, and now uses her experience of being in front of an audience to reach out to others while working for the Be The Match program. And I just want to add a, a personal note on Be The Match, because in 2012, I needed a bone marrow transplant, and my doctor at the City of Hope turned to Janet's organization, Be The Match, and within weeks, they found a potential of 650 donors, and they whittled that down to the, the perfect donor, who turned out to be what they call a perfect match, 10 out of 10, because there are 10 characteristics. They all match perfectly, and here I am, five years later, four years later. So thank you, thank you, Janet, and uh, welcome to our club. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You know, um, Roy's pretty special because we, we share a very close birthday because February 23rd you had your transplant. My birthday is February 24th, mm -hmm. so we're partners. And I believe your birthday is February 25th. 25th, <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <coughs> years ago I ran into Roy. I, was, I happened to be at a, uh, a blood conference. And I had my Be The Match table out there. Uh, this guy strolls on by. And he said, oh, hey, what's, what's, uh, what's Be The Match? I said, we are a, a national registry of, of donors. We find donors for patients who, who need a transplant. And he said, well, I'm getting a transplant. I'm like, wow, that's wonderful. And he said, I didn't even know really what, what Be The Match was. I didn't know. I was just told that I was going to have a transplant, and I had all these donors waiting for me. Well, I, I tell him, every time I see him, how lucky he really is because um, unfortunately, a lot of patients that need a transplant are not as lucky as Roy. And in fact, um, there's about 12 million people on the National Registry of Stem Cell and Marrow Donors. Be The Match has the largest registry and the most diverse registry in the world. And still we do have less than half of the patients who need a transplant actually going on and finding that matching donor. So really, this guy right here is pretty lucky. I mean, he's a walking miracle. Um, but what we need to do as a community and as people on this earth is step up to the plate. You know, Be The Match is that national registry that, that it's a list of angels. You know, I, I talk to many different groups of people. I talk to a lot of young people. We want young people on this registry, 18 to 44 years old on this registry. And when I go out to speak to a group, uh, usually a college group, maybe nursing student class, I implore them to swab their cheek and sign up on the registry. I look them right in the eye and I say, do you know that in 10 minutes you can cure cancer? Would you do that? If you knew that you could cure cancer in 10 minutes, would you step up to the plate and do that? And they all raise their hand and they really are enthusiastic. And so that's really what it takes to join this Be The Match registry of donors. It's a cheek swab and a form to fill out. Your name goes on that registry. Wow. If you get that call one day that you're a match, maybe for a guy like him, well, you're on a journey now. You are going to be part of this incredible life experience. And for the donor, it is a life experience. It's changing. It will change you as a person to be a donor. I don't know if um, Roy will ever get to meet the person that saved him, but I bet you that that person on the other end is is pretty feels pretty great about themselves knowing what they did and so we want to put all these people on the registry we want young people and diverse people on the be the match registry if someone swabs their cheek and they join and they get that call and they're going to be part of that life experience it's actually very doable to donate today so our struggle as a group as a nonprofit organization is to really bust that myth of bone marrow being this painful, awful procedure. Because honestly, it's becoming more routine today to donate than ever before. If somebody is a match, the most likely procedure will be stem cells. 
The daughter will go in, they're awake, they watch movies, and we filter their blood through an apheresis machine. That really takes an afternoon. It's more than just donating blood. I'm very honest when I talk to people about joining the registry. It is more than just going in to donate a pint of blood. But it is one afternoon, and it could be five hours that you're watching movies. <coughs> it could be six hours that you're watching movies. But in those six hours, think of what you're doing. You could be that person's only match in the world. You could be giving five, 10, 15 years of life to someone. You could be saving somebody's father, somebody's mother, somebody's child, somebody's sister, brother. It really is an organization that connects people on this earth. How appropriate Mel's inspiration, inspirational message was about NASA taking these pictures. And we are just a dot. But you know what goes on in that little, on this little planet we call Earth? So much goes on. Everybody in this room has a story. Um, everybody has a routine in your life. We are so lucky in this room to be sitting here having our lunch and sharing with each other. When someone is diagnosed with uh, blood cancer, like leukemia or lymphoma, or maybe a blood disease, their world turns upside down. We had a letter from a, a recipient. And one of the first things that she was thankful for after having her transplant was the ability to go back to work. You know, she was actually thankful to be able to go back to work. Because when you're diagnosed with a cancer, your world is forever changed. Your, your loved ones suffer with you. And it's very stressful. And so the more donors we add onto this registry, the more hope, the more chances we have for everyone. And so the most common procedure, the one that 80% of donors actually end up doing is watching movies and donating some cells out of their blood. And their body remakes these cells naturally. So it, it's actually becoming more routine to donate. And yeah, there is that other procedure called bone marrow donation, which people do tend to be more afraid of. And it is considered surgical. And 20% of our donors today still donate bone marrow, but they're probably matched with a child. And if you're matched with a child who needs you, think of the potential you have to save that child's life and to let that child grow up to be President of the United States or maybe even President of the Rotary Club. <laughs> <laughs> Donating bone marrow does uh, come from the top of your pelvic bone for the donor, but the donor is really placed under anesthesia. In fact, they don't even feel it or remember it. They're going to be out for about an hour and a half. So it's really a quick in and out procedure into the top of the pelvic bone to extract those cells for the patient. The donor is even sent home that same evening with some pain medication for soreness because they will feel sore after a few days. I had a guy at Moore Park College. I went to do a drive. I was out in the quad. I had my Be The Match table up. I was swabbing cheeks that day. Maybe got 25 donors signed up that day. Just get ready to pack up my table, and a young guy walks by by the name of Brian. He goes, hey, I, I did that. I said, oh, great, you swabbed your cheek, and you're, you're on the registry. And he said, no, I did it, Janet. Do you remember me? Last November, I swabbed my cheek, and I was called as a match for a two-year-old little boy. I had to meet the parents of that two-year-old boy in four months. And he said, you know what? And it was Meryl that was asked of me. And you know what? Thank goodness you were very... Uh, honest about the procedure because I, I was sore and it actually happened during finals for Brian of course at the worst possible time finals final exams at college he was called up as a match but what he said was yes and that's the most important thing he said yes when he was called upon um, had Brian said no maybe we wouldn't have that two-year-old with us today the big problem that we're running into with be the match is commitment Less than half the people who are called as match, as matches for donors and for donors to patients actually say yes when called upon. Most people who are called as a match end up saying no. Can you imagine? Um, it's easy to swab your cheek, but when called upon, we are running into this, and now it's actually becoming more. A few years ago, only 47% were saying no. Now it's 53% are saying no. And so what we can do as a community is really bust this myth of the procedures being painful. It is not painful to donate today. Look at this man sitting here. I can't imagine if his donor would have said no. 
and what we can do as a community, and yes, maybe there's somebody in this room that's over the age of 44 and you might not be able to join the registry, but you know how powerful you still are to, the, to this program? You can tell your family and your loved ones. You can tell your grandkids. You can tell your children that donating today is not that bad and it's not that painful. And to please ask their friends to join the registry on BeTheMatch.org. It is one of those things you do in life for another person. It's a life experience that you'll never regret and you'll never forget it. As a community, we always have our walk runs. Um, if you check your little card, there's a, a, a postcard of a walk run that's happening on November 14th. This is our chance to for all of our donors and our patients to come together and to meet each other and go on a three mile uh, walk or run. If you guys aren't doing anything, I know Roy's been out there before. It's in beautiful Long Beach. It's, um, it's very powerful. All the people that come together, these are survivors of leukemias and lymphomas. They get to meet their donors. Um, you guys can form a team, a Rotary Club team, if you would like, and join us on that walk run. I, I'm just very lucky that I get to work with so many different kinds of pe people, so many different kinds of races and ethnicities and, and people of all different walks of life, just in Los Angeles. I mean, can you imagine? I uh, implore every one of you to please spread the message about Be The Match and that it's not this horrific thing that it used to be. I mean, people really uh, are so caught up in what it used to be and they don't really hear what it is today. Be The Match is its a nonprofit organization. Our only mission is to match donors to patients and to help people on this earth survive. It is really uh, a very special organization that I, I'm very lucky to work for. I've been doing it for about six years now. I hope to continue doing this work. Um, I really want to thank Roy for always stepping up. I mean, he's always helping and, and donating and asking to volunteer and asking me to come to events. Every donor that signs up on the registry is an angel, a chance for somebody. Um, I just want to talk about a few patient families that I'm working with right now. I just got a new patient. Her name is Faye Lyons. She's 57 years old. She's Greek. Out of the 12 million people <coughs> on the registry, there's not one single match for Faye. We are going to be doing a drive uh, on November 8th at her church, St. Sophia Church in Los Angeles. I also have a 19-year-old boy named Harut. He's in college. Not one single match on the registry. He's Armenian. Um, and we also lost a dear professor uh, by the name of Shane Freilich. Uh, two weekends ago, he passed away. He had leukemia. He was a professor of kinesiology at CSUN, Cal State University, Northridge. We had been looking for a match for Shane for the past <coughs> three years. We have gone to CSUN, and we had a drive, and in four hours signed up 400 people. We went back to CSUN a few months later, signed up 400 more people. We went back to see them this last year and signed up another 200 people. That's a thousand people that we signed up on the registry. Unfortunately, Shane ended up passing away and leaving his wife Diane and his two uh, newborn twin boys. And they also had another child. And all three of those kids are special needs kids. And Diane, who's a teacher at Oxnard College, did you know that she was there right after Shane passed away? We had another drive right after the timing. It was supposed to be for him, but he ended up passing away. The students wanted to do the drive anyway. And so we had another drive at CSUN, and she was there with the kids. And we want to spread this, this hope. Every person that added onto the registry is a chance. And yes, she lost her husband, but all of those people that signed up in Shane's memory um, could maybe be a match one day. Be the match. Simple, simple mission, huh? To save lives. This little dot that we're on, a lot happens on that little dot. And we can do so much good for people. So thank you very, very much. Um, the information on this little pamphlet here talks about the procedures for donating. Um, please take this with you. Facebook it. Uh, social media. Spread the word about Be The Match and our mission to add these donors onto the registry. Um, if anybody has any questions. You, you could go on 
mine to the website and order a kit to you swab, can. swab any time, right? Yes, you can. If you go on BeTheMatch.org, you can sign up online. Uh, you fill out the information online, and a swab kit is sent to you. It's really an envelope of four Q-tips that you can just rub on the inside of your cheek. Place them back in the envelope, and you send the envelope right back in the mail. Um, online donors tend to be more committed because these are people who really take the time to fill out the form online. They wait for that envelope, they swab their cheek, they put it right back in the mail. They're very committed donors. Um, we've now started implementing a questionnaire. When we have a, a marrow drive, we ask four questions. One, how likely is it that you would actually go on to donate if called upon? And of course, one is being, of course, very likely, two being pretty likely, three being not likely, I won't do it, and four, no, I don't want any part of this. <coughs> and I get people saying, well, I just want to do the swab because the swab is easy. Well, <laughs> that's, part <laughs> one of the whole, that's part one of the whole entire process. Swabbing is easy. And I know a lot of people don't like needles. I'm sure Roy didn't like needles either. I love you know? <laughs> But now. if you could cure cancer and make that decision in 10 minutes to fill out that form and swab your cheek, you're making that promise and that moral commitment inside of yourself to go through and follow through with what you say you're going to do because there's a whole <coughs> group of people that are depending on you. That patient, you're not saving the one patient. You're saving an entire community, all the loved ones surrounding that patient. You're saving an entire group of people. You will not regret it. 18-year-old um, Matt signs up on the registry. He ends up matching a 52-year-old man in Florida, a father. He goes in to donate. It's stem cells that gentleman needs. Matt brings his iPad, his best friend. They have a buddy day. They watch Netflix, Breaking Bad, season one and two. Matt donates. He gets done. He goes about his life. A year later, he gets an email from the wife. And she said, I just want you to know that my husband's test shows he's 100% leukemia-free as of today. You were my husband's match. We are flying from Florida to California to go to Disneyland. We have to look you in the eye. You have to see what you've done for our family. My children have a father because of you. I have my husband because of you. I need you to see what you've done. Many times, you guys, we don't connect. We don't connect. We're on our phones. We don't even talk one-on-one -on -one anymore. The 53% that say no, we have to change it. We have to change that. It can't keep going more and more. We're all very lucky in this room. I have a very special job. I feel very responsible when I talk to people who sign up on the registry with me. Yes, you're going to be sore if it's marrow. Yes, it's going to take some time to come in for some blood work and a physical. And yes, you're going to be the most changed person in your entire life. Look yourself in the mirror and know that you gave time on this earth. There's no greater gift. It's priceless. Thank you. Thank you. We have more questions. Oh, more questions. Yeah, yeah. So my question is, um, is this international? So let's say if you live here, but then the registry is international, and there's, and I think yours, Roy, wasn't it? Somebody yeah, I'll, I'll tell you about mine in a second. Yeah. Yes, we have Be The Match is the largest national registry. We have 12 million people on our registry. That's the United States. We do reference each other. Every country has their own registry. Some have very few on their registry. Some have a lot. Germany has a very large registry. Um, each country has their own registry, and we do reference each country's registry. We all work together. Um, when 9-11 happened, the only plane that was allowed up in the air was our plane, taking cells to a patient. We all help each other, so yes. Yep, let me throw something in quickly, please. Something we talked about in the past, and I'd love to talk about again, is to use our unique status as an e-club, because we do so much stuff online, and try to connect with Rotary Clubs in other countries, and try to work with those Rotary Clubs to put as much effort into their own national databases and spread it that way. That's something we could conceivably do, so let's think about that sometime in the near future. It's not a lot of effort to track down Rotary clubs around the world and see if we can interest them in working with their local their, their local national database. 
why such a young cutoff at 44? I mean, I'm 53, I would love to be able to register. Yeah. You told me I couldn't register. And actually, you can have a guy who's 50 years old and be a triathlon athlete, and we still would not let him register today. 90% of the time, doctors request a donor under the age of 44. It's better for the patient. Roy will do much better with the younger donor. The younger cells actually work better. Um, and that's the only reason why. And also, as we age, you know, things happen with our health as we age into our 50s and 60s. Um, but the, the patient has just an easier transplant experience with younger cells. But is it better than no match? You're and here's the, the here's the here's the strange uh, little rule about be the match. At a live drive, I can only sign up people 18 to 44 years old, but they will still stay on that registry until the age of 60. That was my question. Yes, they will still stay on the registry until the age of 60. The question was, if there are people who can't find the match, don't we need larger numbers for a higher probability? We do, but. In the less than 1% that a doctor will choose an older donor, it's simply more beneficial to the patient to have younger cells. So in other words, too, and it's honestly, it's a matter of cost, part, partially too, because it costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars for every swab. It costs about $100 for every person to swab their cheek and put their name on that registry. We're a nonprofit. We raise money for that through donations. We're going to invest signing up that donor who's age 44, we will still have that donor until the age of 60, rather than investing all that money in signing up a donor perhaps who's 59 years old, and we're going to drop that person off the registry in a year. Um, it just comes down to a matter that's better for the patient and also um, cost too. Yes? You want Roy? When did you speak to that? Yeah, can, can Roy ever meet his donor? Yeah. The, the, the rules are that for two years, for two years, you're not allowed to know who the donor was. They're not allowed to know who you are. Uh, but you can communicate semi-anonymously. So I actually wrote a letter to my donor thanking him. I, I don't know how you express it really, but I did what I could to thank him for what he did. And he wrote back, um, <coughs> said that he was very happy he did it. His family was very supportive. He said it was really not very difficult at all. It was just, you know, like no big deal. And uh, he was very happy to be able to do this for me. Now, it's now past two years, and I can find out who he is if he wants to be uh, known. And I have, not take, I have not taken that step yet. I think I will do it, but I haven't done it yet. It's actually kind of a tough decision for me, too, you know, yeah. because it's, a, it's such an emotional thing. But I think I will do it. What I heard is that he's from Israel and that he was 21 years old. And he did tell me in his letter that he was in college studying computers and Bible. So I figure this, this guy's covering both ends of the spectrum, right? Yeah. Um, but it was certainly a wonderful thing, and, and mine was a little rocky at first, but it worked out perfectly now, and I'm 100% uh, new blood from the cells that I got from this fellow. So it's just an amazing Everything thing. Everything that's running in that 21-year-old is running in him. Right. Wow. right now. Shouldn't we so, be talking to Judy about yeah. this? <laughs> pretty frisky. Right. <laughs> what she said. No, pretty frisky. Pretty frisky. And what so, can I say? Yeah. And um, you know, his his donor, his donor says, you know, it's really no big deal to donate. I, I think people's fear of the whole process right. overtakes the reality. Uh, I mean, if they just know that it's actually okay to donate and not that bad, really. And I've had that, that needle in the hip process many times because if you have a, a blood disease, they do it all the time to check your bone marrow, and it's really not a big deal. I mean, it's for me, it's been uh, a, an anest local, not a local, a general anesthetic just for a short time, and then I get up and I have a little soreness in my hip, but it's really not, not very significant. Uh, and so, I, yeah. Oh, can yep. you get testimonials from donors to say there wasn't a big deal? Yeah, and, and we do, and I bring those donors with me to, like, when I go to Antelope Valley College, or, and it's hard to sometimes find a donor in um, the area where I'm working. Mm -hmm. um, in the six years I've been at City of Hope, and I've signed up, well, thousands and thousands of donors, I personally um, have signed up about 20 that have gone on to donate. Wait, 20 of them. Maybe, just put them on video and put them on the website. Yeah, they're on there. 
YouTube. If you YouTube be the match and search, we have many uh, testimonials on there. You know, if if we wanted to, because um, I talk it up all the time when I'm with young people, which isn't that often, about getting on the list. Could I have a packet of a dozen envelopes to actually hand out to people? Is that okay? You know what? We tend to not do that unless we actually go there and have a drive um, to make sure they get the messaging right. Okay. And message, if you yeah. just hand somebody an envelope, chances are, unless you're there, they're not really going to follow through and, and, and it. send okay. it in. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good to know. Yeah. Really? That was a stupid question because I like those. No, sure. um, uh, being a donor, are, who covers the cost of the donor's medical Good procedures? question. Everything is covered by Be The Match. Uh, any travel expense, um, but if you sign up through City of Hope, the, the donor who matches is more likely to donate at City of Hope. Very rarely does the donor travel to the patient. We have medical couriers who take those cells to the patient's bedside. Um, but everything is, is handled and covered by Be The Match. We're nonprofit. I mean, we, we do raise money for that. Uh, we don't want the donor to be inconvenienced financially whatsoever. We want the donor to have a, a really wonderful experience. Thank you. Any other questions? A follow-up one. Uh, yeah. You said City of Hope. Is there other hospitals that, I mean, obviously, they would go other yep. places, so how does yeah. that work? Yeah. So City of Hope just runs the Be The Match program here, but there are many people, uh, Be The Match groups, who sign up donors under the registry. and. A group that's not affiliated, a Be The Match uh, registry group that does marrow drives that is not uh, connected to a hospital. Um, it depends where the um, patient is. And they make those arrangements Be The Match for the donor and the patient. Okay. Well, thank you, Janet. Thank you, Roy. And we have a book. We have a book.